three, two, one. Good morning, Lakeway. One more time. Good morning, Lakeway. Awesome. Great day. First day of fall. Glad to see everybody. If you're online for the first time, glad to have you. You could have been in your pajamas, still in bed, but you're here with us, and there's a reason for that. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. If you're new to Lakeway, we do have a welcome card in front of your chairs. And with that, just fill it out. There's also a QR code. You actually scan the QR code on your phone, and all of a sudden, they'll prompt you for information. We just want to see that uh, you came for the first time and just say hello to you. And uh, first of all, my name is Hector Leal. I'm one of the elders here, and it's been a while. We haven't been here for a couple of weeks, and so it's great to be back home. Also, in front of your chairs, there's a prayer request card. And the reason why I'm mentioning that now, because later on, we're actually going to take on our offering at the end of the service. But if you have a prayer, you'd like somebody to pray for you, you can make it confidential. But go ahead and fill that out. We're a church of believers, believes in prayer. And I tell you, just in my experience, I know God's answered numerous prayers for me and my family. And then last but not least, as we take the offering at the very, very end, we'll also have our offering tithes. You can actually put that in, drop it into the basket, or you can get online and visit us on Tithely and do your donations and offerings at that point as well. With that, let's go ahead and stand up. Why don't we give the welcome the gift? Uh, should we give them oh, the that's right. Yeah. Also, guys, let me tell you something. If this is your first time at Lakeway, if you haven't been here in a long time, we have this, this, this Lakeway mug. And this is just a token of our appreciation to say you could have gone anywhere. God brought you here, but we'd like for you to have this. I know that Al has about five of these, so there's one per couple. But uh, no, <laughs> well, no, one for each per person. Couple. But it is a collector's item. It is priceless. <laughs> Let me go ahead and pray, and then uh, we're going to greet everybody. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, it's so nice to be back in your home, back into your house. I just felt remiss not being here. But Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to come together and just worship you and honor you and glorify you. This is your day. Lord, we just welcome the Holy Spirit to work within this house. Lord, be with our band, our praise band, that we honor and glorify you as we all sing just a praise to you. And Lord, just be with our pastor as he speaks and his words echo what you want to have him share on his heart. And Lord, we just thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say amen. amen. Do me a favor. Everybody raise their hand. Now put it in front of you. Turn around and say hello to the person next to you. Welcome to Lakeway. All right, good morning again, Lakeway. We're so glad you're here today. Let's let God arise in our hearts this morning as we all sing with a smile on our face. Smile, I see the smile. Smile on our face and joy in our hearts this morning. Let God arise, ready?
Sing this with us. Come on. That's the way to let him rise in your heart. And we're reaching for him all the time, or we, at least we should be always reaching for God, asking him to be a part of our life and looking where we can be a part of what he is doing, right? So let's sing, reaching for you.
next song speaks about how we're we're all supposed to not just believe and, and, and love Jesus, but to spread his word around the world all the way to the ends of the earth and back. All right. Let's sing this song to the ends of the earth. every time we sing that song. <laughs>
presence is here right now. Right now, open every heart in here, online, for the message you have for us today. A message of love, a message of hope, Lord, and help us to bring that love and hope to everyone around us, Lord. We love you and thank you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, worship team. That was awesome. Good morning, everybody. I told them I wanted a wave when I got up here. <laughs> I did not expect them to do it. <laughs> That's great. Wow. Hey, I want to... <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit right there. I want to give Brandon a shout out. Is he in here? No, not this Brandon, the other Brandon. <laughs> He's with the youth. I want to give Brandon a shout out for stepping in for me last week. I heard so many positive and good comments about the message that he brought last week. So make sure you let him know, okay? It's important that he would know that. So it's just great for me to have that confidence that if I go somewhere, I know that, you know, there's somebody that's going to bring a message that people are going to say, wow, you know, that really touched me. So that is great. Good to see some new faces, good to see some old faces this morning. It's nice to see people uh, back with us again that haven't been for a while. That warms my heart too. I'm really going to mess with you this morning though. Um, we're diving back into this series higher. Let love be your highest goal. And this morning we're going to finish up chapter 2 of 1 John. And I'm going to tell you something, it's a doozy. Is that a word? Doozy? John gets into some deep, deep stuff in this last part of chapter 2 because he's dealing with some deep issues. But So we're, we're going to get into some stuff this morning, but the principle at the end of it all is actually quite a simple principle. And John learned right from Jesus, because Jesus was dealing with some of these very same issues and what John shares with us in this part of chapter 2 is directly what he learned from Jesus. So let's have a word of prayer and then we'll, we'll get right into it. Heavenly Father, I just thank you again for each person that you've brought here this morning. Father, I pray for this to be a sanctuary. That we can put aside the worries of the world. Father, there's so much going on in our world with politics and assassination attempts and wars and terrorism, but you are God, and you are over all things, and we turn our eyes to you as our God, and Father, you are the only one that can bring peace in the midst of all of this trouble, so this morning I pray as we gather in this place to seek you that your peace would be upon us, that your hope would be in us. That we would have a joy from looking into your word. Father, open up our hearts and our minds and our spirits to what you would teach us this morning. And guard us against anything that is not of you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let me warn you. It's going to be a bumpy ride this morning. You ever been on an airplane and the pilot comes on and says, Buckle up. We're about to hit some turbulence. Well, buckle up, because <laughs> we are about to hit some turbulence. So 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 through 29. Dear children, the last... I'm going to read through the whole thing, and then we'll dive into what we want to talk about. Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this, we know that the last hour has come. These people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved that they did not belong with us. But you are not like that. For the Holy One has given you His Spirit. 
And all of you know the truth. So I am writing to you, not because you don't know the truth, but because you know the difference between truth and lies. And who is a liar? Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either. But anyone who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So you must remain faithful to what you've been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. And this fellowship we enjoy... And in this fellowship, we enjoy the eternal life he promised us. I'm writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. But you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you. So don't, so you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. And what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. And now, dear children, remain in fellowship with Christ so that when he returns, you will be full of courage and not shrink back from him in shame. Since we know that Christ is righteous, we also know that all who do what is right are God's children. Did everybody get sermon notes that need sermon notes? If you didn't get a copy of the notes, raise your hand. One up here. Anybody else? Over here. Someone raise their hand over there just for the sake of it. You need the exercise. There you go, Bob. (laughs) All right, let's dive in. Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard the Antichrist is coming. And already many such antichrists have appeared. From this, we know that the last hour has come. End times. Always such a smooth subject. A lot of people have been thinking about the end times, especially with everything that's going on in the world, in the Middle East, and wars and rumors of wars, and asking the question, are these the end times? John believed it was the last hour. Now, this was written close to 2,000 years ago. So apparently, the last hour is long. (laughs) And this idea that it is the last hour has been prevalent in the church for 2,000 years. I remember the, the, the very first connection that I had with any form of church when I was a Early in my teens, my parents got involved with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And back then, they believed that Armageddon, the final battle between God and Satan, Jesus and Satan, was coming in, I can't remember if it was 1975 or 1979, but they had a date. This is the year of Armageddon. And I remember everybody in that church all across the world were waiting for this day in 1975 to come. It was, that was the date. And for my whole Christian walk, it's one thing that's been consistent all the way through it. People believe that it's the end times. Now, why did John believe it was the last hour? Well, he had been with Jesus. And Jesus had talked extensively about the last days before his arrest and and going to the cross. He had taken a time out and, and quite extensively talked about the last days. Now, oddly, this this whole end times dialogue is found in three of the four Gospels. It's found in Matthew 24. You might want to jot this down if you want to read it. Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Whose Gospel is it not in? John, the person that wrote this letter, didn't have it in his, and here he is talking about it. And he says, Dear children, the last hour is here. Now, here's why John believed it was the last hour. Jesus talked as though his return, not his resurrection, but his second coming, he talked as though it was imminent. And he talked about all the warnings and the signs. There'll be wars, there'll be rumors of wars, there'll be famines, earthquakes, there'll be persecution of the believers in the church. There'll be a great falling away. 
rampant wickedness and the rise of false teachers. All things that John was witnessing. This stuff is going on around him. He's like, man, that, I remember Jesus teaching on this and I'm seeing this. And the early church and the apostles, like Jesus, believed that his second coming was imminent. Now, this letter, 1 John, is actually one of the last letters that was written in the New Testament. So it's been a few years since Jesus has ascended into heaven. And John has seen a lot of stuff happening. And and so there was this feel that the return of Jesus was hot. It was right now. It's got to be coming. Any moment now, dear children, this is the last hour. But what Jesus also told his disciples when he talked about the end times and all the signs of the end times, when he got near to the end of it, he said, here's the thing, guys, I don't know when it is. Nobody knows. Only God the Father knows. Not even the angels know. So he gives them all these warning signs about the last times, and you can tell from Jesus' teaching that Jesus himself was thinking, it's not going to be long. I'll be back soon. But he also... I don't know, guys. I don't know when it's going to be. There's only one who knows, and he has not revealed it to anyone, not even me. It's kind of a weird thing, isn't it, that Jesus wouldn't know when his second coming was. Very strange. So John is looking at what's going on. He's looking at the signs, and he's interpreting them as the last hour, as many today are. I mean, we look at what's going on in the Middle East and the world, and, and when I said, is this the last hour, I heard somebody, I think it was Randy, said, yeah, it is. Is the last hour here? Are these the end times? Maybe. Maybe not. If Jesus doesn't know, don't be looking to me. <laughs> Only the Father knows. So a little bit of turbulence there on the journey this morning. John continues. It gets more turbulent. These people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved that they did not belong with us. All right, this is a real bumpy ride right here. Have you ever wondered about... People who seem to be committed Christians, and then they leave the church. They walk away from their faith. Anyone ever wondered about that? I think most people have. What happens to them? Is it possible for a believer to become an unbeliever? Can someone who was saved become unsaved? Told you it was going to be a bumpy ride this morning. (laughs) There are a number of prominent skeptics who started out as professing believers. Some of these you might have heard of. Dan Barker. He is the president of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. President of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. He's made a job, a living, of freeing people from faith. He was an evangelical pastor for 19 years. 1984, he left Christianity, declared himself an atheist, and then started this freedom from religion. It's now his life goal to free people from faith. Charles Templeton. Some of you may have heard of him. He's deceased now. He was an evangelist who at one time toured with Billy Graham. He was a top evangelist, internationally known. He had a TV show called Look Up and Live. He preached in 44 states. Along with Billy Graham, he founded the Youth for Christ International Organization. In the late 50s, he quit evangelism, became an outspoken agnostic, and then moved to atheism. Bart Ehrman is a New York Times best-selling author and a well-known skeptic who continually casts doubt 
on the reliability of the New Testament. I've watched some of his stuff. It's very compelling. He describes himself as a former born-again fundamentalist. He studied at Moody Bible Institute, graduated from Wheaton College, now is a confirmed atheist trying to help people get out from under faith. Those are big names. But many of you probably know people that you grew up with or were in church with people and you saw them go through all the same things that you did, VBS and, and camp and everything else and, and go forward and say the prayer and get baptized and at some point walked away from their faith. It's happening in greater and greater numbers to our young people these days because there's such a strong atheistic movement in the colleges. They go off to college and it doesn't take long for them to, to, to walk away from their faith. So whether they identify as an atheist, an agnostic, or simply apathetic toward faith, what are we to make of people who walk away from their faith? I mean, at some point they were born again believers, said the prayer, baptized, and now they've walked away from their faith. What are we to make of that? So I'm going to present to you three possibilities, okay? First, and there's a lot for you to write on this one for your notes, they were and still are saved. And the idea is that even though they've made a choice to walk away from faith, God's salvation is irreversible and it cannot be lost. And there's a scripture that says, even when we are unfaithful, he is still faithful. That's an option. Option number two, they were saved, but now they've lost their salvation. They were true believers, but when they stopped believing and rejected their faith, God removed from them his blessing and they lost their salvation. It's an option. Option number three. They never were saved. They may have looked like the real deal. Talked the talk. Walked the walk. But they were never sealed by the Holy Spirit. Never really saved. Now when I look at these three options. I want number one to be true. Number one brings a lot of comfort, doesn't it? If, if you've got loved ones that have at one time were, were firmly in the church and, and seemed to be living the life of Christ and then they walked away from faith and if they've passed on now, I want number one. Number two, for me, by definition, cannot be true. When you think of the word saved, what are you saved from? You're saved from an eternity separated from God. Well, if you're saved from an eternity, you cannot be unsaved from an eternity. Otherwise, it wouldn't be eternity. So for me, number two is, is simply not an option. But I know a lot of people that believe that, that you can lose your salvation. And I guess what they would be thinking in, is um, they were saved from judgment, but now they're not saved from judgment. So they're still going to get judged. The vast majority of scriptures most definitely point to option number three. And I could get into this deeply and please come talk to me afterwards because we're going to deal we're dealing with some deep stuff here at a very shallow level the scriptures teach that a christian is not simply someone who says a prayer walks down the aisle says a prayer meets with the pastor somewhere says a prayer gets baptized all good important things but a christian is a person who has fully trusted in jesus christ as their savior 
and therefore possesses is sealed by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.13 says, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. And this idea of a seal is like the, a ruler's seal that, boom, once it's been stamped, it cannot be broken. And this scripture is saying, once you are a true believer, the Holy Spirit comes into you and you are sealed by God. It is the deposit that God puts in you for the future hope that you have of eternal life. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. So for a Christian to lose salvation, the new creation would have to be destroyed. And there are many other examples in Scripture that bear out option for me, option three. Now, for me or you or anyone to say, this person's saved, that one's not. This one used to be, that one's not now. Or even to suggest that someone's faith was insincere or not would be insensitive and judgmental at best. God is the one. Jesus is the one that makes that call. Not me or you. But it, this scripture that jo in 1 John here is definitely speaks to this third option. He says, these people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved that they did not belong with us. They might have been with us, but they weren't part of us. They didn't belong to us. They might have even looked like the real deal, but they never were the real deal is what John is saying here. Now, who were these people? So John was dealing with a very specific issue. John and the early church were dealing with a group of people who on the outside seemed like real believers, true believers, but they were actually teaching a false doctrine. They were called Gnostics. It's the opposite of an agnostic. You know, if somebody is atypical, it means they're not typical. Gnostic means knowledge. Agnostic is like a Gnostic means you can't know. So these people believed, among other things, that the path to salvation was not through Jesus, but by special knowledge. If you had this knowledge, you were good to go. And if you didn't have this knowledge, too bad for you. And through this knowledge, you could escape, escape. Through this knowledge, you could escape the evil of the flesh and become purely spiritual, purely good. So one of the things they believed is that everything that is matter, everything that is flesh, is evil. 100%. So we are all evil. Only spirit is good. And John is denouncing this false teaching. He says, but you're not like that. So now he's talking to the real believers. But you're not like that. For the Holy One has given you his spirit and all of you know the truth. So this speaks to option number three. You've got his spirit. These people didn't have his spirit. So I'm writing to you not because you don't know the truth, but because you know the difference between truth and lies. And who is a liar? Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ. Catch the phrasing there. Anyone that says Jesus is not the Christ. It's like two separate entities. I'll get into that in a second. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an antichrist against the Christ. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either. But anyone who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So these Gnostics... 
because of this idea that the flesh is evil and the spirit is good, they would deny the humanity of Jesus Christ. And this is the, what John is dealing with here. I hope I'm not getting too deep on you. If all flesh is evil, then the Christ could not have become flesh because he would have become evil. So Jesus only seemed to be a human. He wasn't really a human. He just seemed like a human. Now, one section of Gnosticism kind of took this to a whole different level, and it's the one that we believe John was dealing with here. They believed that Jesus was an ordinary man, and when he was baptized, the Christ came into him and possessed him for a while, and then right before he got executed, the Christ left him again. So he was possessed for a period of time by the Christ, but Jesus and Christ are not the same people according to these Gnostics. Jesus was this guy who got possessed by the Christ. Is that not weird? But that was their belief. And this was the stuff that John was refuting. This was a, a common belief that came into the early church. And many of the letters that we read in the New Testament were written to refute this teaching. And John calls them antichrists. But he says, but you're not like that. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the spirit of truth in you. So you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. And, this, and in this fellowship, we enjoy the eternal life he promised. So this, again, speaks to option number three. They were, they were with us, but they didn't have the spirit, and they didn't have eternal life. This was proved when they left, when they departed. I'm writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray, but you have received the Holy Spirit, and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. Now, he's not saying you don't need teaching. He's saying that the spirit of truth is in you and will verify what is true and what is false. You will know because the spirit teaches it to you. But the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. And what He teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as He taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. Okay, so a lot of deep, weird kind of stuff going on there. End times, who's saved, who's not saved. Here's the takeaway. It's not Chinese. I do enjoy Chinese takeaway, but this is not. <laughs> And now, dear children, and this is the exact thing that John learned from Jesus when Jesus was talking about end times. And now, dear children, remain in fellowship with Christ so that when he returns, you will be full of courage and not shrink back from him in shame. Since we know that Christ is righteous, we also know that all who do what is right are God's children. So at the end of this dialogue, when Jesus was telling them about end times, he tells them two things. First off, he says, I don't know when it is, guys. Maybe it's next week. Maybe it's 10 years' time. Maybe it's 2,000 years' time. Maybe it's 3,000 years' time. Don't know. But here's what I do know, and here's what you need to know. Be prepared. That's what John is teaching here, and that's what he learned from Jesus. Be prepared. Is it the last hour? I don't know, but it might be. So be prepared. Be ready. And Jesus taught consistently throughout his ministry about being ready for the return of the king. It's right to live as though this is the final hour. It's wise to live as though this is the final hour, because it may be. And you need to be prepared. Now, what does it mean to be prepared and to be ready? It means to be prepared emotionally, spiritually, and physically. We talk about ESP all the time. 
emotionally, spiritually, and physically. We don't get caught up in the roller coaster of fear and anxiety fretting over the future and what's going to happen and what may happen and what might not happen. I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff going on in the world, isn't there? There's a lot of stuff going on here in the USA with attempted assassinations and people at arms with one another. Here's the truth of the matter. There's very little that you and I can do about those things. So don't obsess about them. Don't obsess about who is going to win the election. Don't obsess about Israel and the Middle East. Don't obsess about Russia and North Korea and, and all of that. Do what you can do. And here's what you can do. You can pray and you can vote. That's what you can do. You can vote and you can pray. Outside of that, most of this stuff is outside of our control. We get to go along for the ride. In the meantime, keep the main thing the main thing. Let love be your highest goal. You know, maybe Jesus is going to come back before the election. And all your fretting and worrying about the election doesn't matter because Jesus is coming back before the election. Didn't matter, any of it. Here's how you're to live. Jesus is coming back before the election. That should be our mindset. I don't need to worry about this election because my God is coming back before. If maybe he will, maybe he won't. That's the attitude that I need to have. That's the way I need to live. Emotionally, I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. Do you know why I'm not going to worry about tomorrow? Because I know what my tomorrow is. It's beyond all of this. Whatever happens here, I still know what my tomorrow is. Spiritually, focus on the good news, not the bad news. Make this book your main meal. Did I put Philippians 4.8 in the notes? No. Philippians 4.8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, just in case it's the last hour. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Focus on this stuff. Make this your main meal. Be in God's word. And then physically, be about the work that God has called you to. Now what happens here, the second, number two, we go to the next slide, I think it's there, yeah. Number two, spiritually, when you're in the word, feeds number one. I start to think better. Because I'm reading the good news instead of focusing on the bad news. Instead of focusing on what if, I'm focusing on what is. What I know to be true. And then when you focus on that, you emotionally start to feel better. And when you start to feel better, when you start to feel good, you start to do good. So it starts to be lived out in your life. When you don't feel good, you're prone to sin. Because you look for things to make you feel good. What's going to make me feel good? A big old pint of IPA or two or three or four. What's going to make me feel good? Watching some mindless show that doesn't honor God. That'll numb me for a while. Oi. <laughs> I deliberately don't have my phone here because there's a big game on right now. <laughs> distracted me now. <laughs> when you're in the Word, when you're focused on what is good and true and honorable, you feel good. And when you feel good, you do good. Be about the work that God has called you to do. Make it a priority. Discover it Train for it and do it. Now, I have an apology for some of you. A couple of weeks ago, I said, if you'd like to know more about who God has shaped you to be, send me 
scan the QR code and, and, and I'll get it and I'll get back to you. And I thought, it was kind of strange. Nobody scanned it. I got one and that was written. And I was talking to someone this morning, critiquing them for not responding. I wasn't. And they said, you know, I did that twice. So I never got it. So somewhere there's a glitch in the system. Now, Kim was away that week. So if you want to know more about who God has shaped you to be, your spiritual gifts, let's try it one more time. Scan the QR code and I'll see if I get it this time. So I just want to apologize to all of you. I'm not ignoring you. I didn't know. God told me to say that. Let me finish with this. (laughs) Somebody said, you look good this morning. Sometimes when I'm getting ready to go out, especially when I'm coming here on a Sunday morning, and I clothe myself, sometimes my wife will graciously and kindly look at me and say, really? (laughs) That's what you're wearing? It's a wonderful passage of Scripture. Colossians 3, the whole chapter is nice. If you want to obsess on something, obsess on this. Since God chose you, since God chose you to be the holy people He loves, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love. Make love your highest priority. Clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. Anybody would like some peace? Yeah, we all need a little peace, don't we? For as members of one body, this is important, this is why we're called to be together. As members of one body, you are called to live in peace. And, I love this little footnote, and always be thankful. So let me ask you a question. When somebody looks at you as a Christian, what do they see? Do they see somebody who is wrapped up in anxiety, worry, fear, frustration, maybe some anger in there, obsessing over world events? Or do they see the peace and the love and the gratitude that comes from the power of the Holy Spirit that is within you? When we clothe ourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and love. When we have an attitude of gratitude, not only does it look good on us, but it is a reflection of the one we are following, the one who we represent. We're called to live higher. We're called to live in love. Let love be your highest goal. Then, on that final day, in that final hour, you will be able to stand firm and know that a rich reward awaits you. Amen? Okay, so we covered some deep stuff here, and I want to invite you. Feel free to contact me if you've got questions about any of this stuff. And uh, if I get it, I'll respond. (laughs) Maybe write it. (laughs) Put it in the offering as it goes back. But please feel free to come to me and contact me if you have any questions. Um, My wife is here, so I am going to go ahead and do this. We had a number of people take 101 recently. And they have fulfilled all of the requirements for membership. So if I can get my wife and her camera to come on down here, I can see some of them. I can see one right there. 
Let me get these in the right order. I know this person is here. Mr. Tim Autry. Is Sarah here? She's what? She's on her way. It's not going to work well, is it? <laughs> How far out is she? Yeah, well, we'll just all wait. Tell her we're waiting. <laughs> you know, come on up. She's going to be so embarrassed. I love it. <laughs> Mr. Tim Autry. Yes, sir. It is my pleasure and my honor to welcome you into membership of Lakeway. Thank you. Guys. I'll hold on to Sarah's and we'll do it next week, okay? Mr. Matt Moore. How many years, Matt? 12 years? His wife was a member a long time ago. But Matt used to work on Sundays, so he has a valid excuse. But Matt, I'm glad you finally got there. And as a, the pastor, I'm glad to welcome you into membership at Lakeway. Is Billy here? No, different Billy. All right, so we got two for next week. What else? Oh, I'm done. Hector's doing the announcements. Are you here, Hector? All right. Be quick because it's the last hour. Absolutely. Hey, if I can have those that if I can have those that are taking up the offering, come on up. We got a lot to cover. If you're new to Lakeway, this is your first time in a long time. In the back of your bulletin, there is QR codes. If you want to get mail, if you want to change your signups for mail, prayer request, offering, all back there, QR code. You just use your phone. Um, with that, you know, offering is really special for me because it's not, it's more than just being obedient to what God's called us to do as far as giving us or giving back the finances that he asked us to give. You know, that's just a minimal of it. But as I think about the offering, he wants us. He wants you. As that offering basket's going around, just ask that you pray. Whatever's on your heart, whatever's keeping you from being one with God, may that be a struggle at work, a relationship, whatever. I just ask as this basket goes around, just surrender yourself. Jump in that basket head first. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for each and every one that's in this sanctuary and those who can't be here, for those that are online. Lord, we just ask that you just bless these funds, these offerings, these ties to honor you and glorify your kingdom and build this church. Lord, we just thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. we got a lot of things to talk about. And uh, if you go to the middle of your bulletin, we have some things that we need to share with you. First of all, the pastor's welcome lunch. For those that are new to Lakeway, have never been part of the pastor's welcome lunch, we have lunch for you. I think we have like four couples signed up, but if you'd like to be a part of that, just go back there, see Sandra. We have plenty of food, love to have you. Don't have to have prior reservations, RSVP will take you right now. It'll be a cheap dinner for you, lunch for you, so please be a part of that. This is our opportunity. And that's right now. This is our opportunity to share a little bit about Lakeway. Also have a couple of the leaders in there. So each table will have a leader, uh, the pastor, ask questions, talk about Lakeway, and just get to know you. So a great opportunity, if you've never been a part of that, to join us this afternoon immediately after the service. Men's Fellowship Dinner. Guys, I think we have like 25 men signed up to have steaks next Saturday. Here's the gist. I need you to sign up by the end of this service at the very end go ahead and make sure your name's on there if you've texted me and it's not on that list i need everybody on that list i took a leap of faith about three weeks ago before i left go out of town i bought like 25 ribeyes about an inch thick uh we're all going to do you are cooks and just have great fellowship and that's next saturday here at the church in the youth building so be a part of that but i do need to collect your funds and also need to have you sign up and here's a gist one of the things that we've always said at Men's Ministry, if there's a means, there's a way. If finances is going to get in the way of you attending, just come and talk to me. God will make it happen. We'll make it happen. Um, coat drive. 
Pardon me. Yes, sir. Right then. No, just take a check or, or cash. We'll figure something out. But I just don't want to buy 40 steaks and all of a sudden have 20 people show up. We'll figure out. So please be a part of that. Uh, I'll be seeing people right after that. Um, a build out for the Coke Drive. And that's going to be September 29th. All hands on deck. Come on, join us. Be a part of something special. A lot of people are asking, hey, where can I serve? Where can I help? Just jump in. Foot forward. Just be a part of something. We'll put you to work. More hands. Less work and uh, get that done, and that's happening on September 29th. Lake Waste Chili Cook-Off. Guys, this is exciting because I think we had like nine sign up last year. It was happening during the church auction, and I think we had first place, second place, third place. Do we have those down there uh, listed? But there's your winners. Somebody told me that David opened up a can of Wolf Brand Chili and won it first place. Give him a round of applause. Great job, Dave. But no, I think we have like 14 entries, and that's going to be a part of the auction. So be a part of something special. I tell you, it's a blast. And speaking of the auction, the ladies are going to be auctioning out the ladies. No? My wife said, don't screw this up. Okay, the church is auctioning off the ladies. No, hold on just a second. Make sure I don't say this right. Okay, here we go. Number one note, do not say that it's Alex Larson's birthday. Oh, forget it. All right, with that, guys, let me tell you something about the auction. It's a church auction sponsored by the ladies' ministry. Everybody's welcomed. In fact, we actually have, the ladies actually have prizes and, and auction items right outside the foyer, some that you're going to see online and some that are going to be on a silent auction. But we also have a live auction here, and some of the things that they're going to be auctioning off, and I'm going to tell you, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have an auctioneer here. We're going to talk about Six Flags tickets. You might get them for 10 bucks. You might get them for $100. Again, the cause goes back to women's ministry. We have Perry's Pizza for $50. We have Dallas Cowboy tickets. Oh, Little um, Dallas Cowboy, Little League. Okay. Either way, you got Rough Rider. You have, guys, you want to know what the number one item, and this is how this goes. Let's say Brandon is going to help mow somebody's lawn one week out of the month for the next 12 months. Here we go. Looking for the first bidder. Did I get first bidder? You got to get $25. You got $25. You get $30. Third day, you got 30. You got 40. You got 40. You got 40. You got 40. Hey, can I get 40? 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 45. I haven't done this in a long time. 50. Can I get 50? Can I get 50? I got 50. Can I get 60? 60. 60. $100. $100. 105. 105. Got 105. You get the gist of it. Going once, going twice, sold. Brandon, you're going to be mowing my lawn for the next week. <laughs> month but guys it's a lot of fun it's a church auction it's to raise money don't think about the finances although i'm taking my wife's checkbook from her but uh the number one item and it's listed here pam chesney thank you so much her desserts you want to know how that went got an opening bid for 25 dollars gonna get 25 dollars 150 and so it ended right there then pam thank you what a blessing to have part of her treats but uh, just continue. Be a part of that. It's something fun. It's something special. And it's just a great opportunity to experience the chili cook-off, the auction, the live auction, etc. Immediately after church, right here, Lakeway. And then last but not least, we have the Coat Drive Fall Festival. Invite somebody. Allow somebody to be a part of something special. Let's go ahead and stand up. Woo! Yes, sir. Oh, Sarah's here. Okay, Sarah's gotcha. here. You can sit down again. Oh, gotcha. Hey, I do want to say, Brandon, thank you. I texted him, and uh, I was going to initiate him. I tried. I was about to call him during his sermon. Yeah, either way. Come, come on up with your wife, Tim. I told Hector to go along with the announcements, because we knew you would get here eventually, Sarah. How, how do you feel now? Amazing. Do you know what? It is amazing that someone would still come, right? I mean, you get to the end of the service and she's just determined to get to church because church is about being with you all. So that is awesome. Sarah, you have completed all of the requirements for church membership. So as the pastor, I want to welcome you in to Lakeway as a member. We've, we've only, only been coming for about 10 years. Yeah, <laughs> 10 years for them, 12 years for him. 
We'll be doing another 101 soon. So if you've not, you know, you've been thinking about membership, this is your church, but you've not really stepped in, that's when to do it. All right, I guess I'll close up with prayer. All right, let's please stand. Father, I give you thanks for each and every person that is here today. I thank you as we go from here that we would be emotionally, spiritually, and physically healthy in the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, may love be our highest goal. And may everybody that comes into contact with us know that you are our God, that your Spirit lives in us because of the love and the peace and the hope that we carry with us. Father, may it just rub off to everyone we meet. Father, I pray your blessing upon each and every one so that we can go from here and be a blessing. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you next week. And please join us for the, what's it called? The lunch. <laughs> Pastor welcome lunch. <laughs>